guys, Charlie Snaver here with a quick video on silicon carbide pad effectiveness. Now I've told you in other videos that metallographic preparation sometimes is regarded as an art rather than a science. And that's because you can take many different paths to get to the same results. You know, you can skip pads, you can use different media, sometimes you can even let the vibramet do all the heavy lifting. But regardless of what your preference is, you will most likely use silicon carbide pads at some point. And I think it's very important for all of us to understand their strengths and their weaknesses. So I made this little poster where uh, I perform a little experiment to uh, explore silicon carbide pads a little more. You see, I've talked to Bueller and Actec representatives and they've all told me that you should use these pads for very little time. And I, if, when they told me this, I, I thought, of course, they'll say that, you know, that means we'll buy more. But once I did the experiment to see if, there, if this was true or not, it turns out they're right. Silicon carbide pads only last for about a minute, at the most a minute and a half. And this poster is evidence for that. However, just because they last very little doesn't mean they're not effective. So let me walk you through the poster so we can see what I mean by that. All right, guys, here's the poster. It's titled, Are You Removing Material or Just Hiding the Scratches? And what I did is I grabbed a bunch of copper blanks, uh, copper blank pucks, and I polished them at the same speed and three different forces and with the same grid size. But I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. But what I found out, at least with this grit size, is that the material rate plummets very quickly. Within the first minute or so, you're down to about 15% of your material rate removal. And you may say, well, if I use a low force, maybe they last longer, right? But not, that's not the case. Look at the one pound uh, trays, this green one. You're... 30 seconds after you started, you're down to 30% of your material rate effectiveness. So keep that in mind when you use these uh, these pads. Now, I did find something that may tempt people into using the pads for a little longer. If you look closely at these images here, you find that the first the first three, look at the five five pound trays, for example. The first three images, the first one and a half minutes, are very rough looking and then if you keep using them for a little longer they start looking a little prettier or start looking a little better and you might say oh cool well my sample's looking great but there's no material being removed here and if you look closely what's going on here is that the scratches are getting buried the material is being smeared over itself because it's just being pushed by against paper and the scratches are being buried and you have to ask yourself is that a good thing well i don't think so if you're changing to a new pad after this you'll just go back to this mess so all the embellishing here that you did on the extra minute and a half or so is worthless and if you think about it, well, the point of material of the point of polishing, the point of, of step polishing is removing the damage from the previous scratches, is removing material. So are you removing any material here? No. <laughs> so don't waste your time. And um, I guess that's why the title is called, Are You Removing Material or Just Hiding the Scratches? Keep that in mind. Now, the other thing I did was I took pictures of the pads to try and understand what was going on in the pads. And when I took 3D pictures like this and I looked at their 2D profiles, I noticed there's, there's, there's at the beginning when they're new, there's this big, sharp silicon carbonate particles. Those are the useful ones. Those are the ones that we want to be, that we hope to have for as long as we can. But you see very quickly within the first 30 seconds, they're gone. And that... If you think about it, that shouldn't be very surprising because after all, they're just attached to a piece of paper. Of course, they're going to fall off. And then they just get washed away by the water and just, they, there's no more work being done. So I think this poster kind of gives us a, a better idea of what's going on when you use a silicon carbide pass. And hopefully, it'll hang around the lab for a couple of years, reminding people that yes, your sample might look better, but it's not necessarily better. 
your your damage is still underneath all those scratches are still underneath and remember if you're just going to go back to using a new pad you'll mess it up again so don't remove your damage by going longer remove your damage by jumping to the next grit all right now i know this is only for 600 grit maybe you're thinking that you could use 240 and a 400 for a little longer maybe you're right but i can't imagine them lasting that much longer there's still silicon carbide particles glued to a piece of paper they're gonna fall off at some point so uh actually the manufacturers do say that the coarse of grids may last a little longer good however they say also that the finer grids last less so what does that tell you about 800 or 1200 you know are we supposed to use them for 30 seconds and they're useless after that i don't know and that's why i don't use them so think about that and maybe consider using other media like I do in my polishing videos, uh, where I go through uh, diamond pads and diamond suspensions uh, for finer grids, which work, I, th I found that they work a lot better. Um, even if you're a 2212 person, you can actually uh, work those with, with methanol and ethanol. So ask around for that. They're great. I highly recommend it. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you are uh, familiar now with how silicon carbide pads work.